Hey everybody. Um, let's see if we can have a quick conversation. If I can clarify some things, answer some questions, clear the air. I'm going to try and make this brief. I know a lot of people have been wondering where I'm at and what's going on. Basically, I wanted to wait to make this video to determine if I can make this video or if I should make this video and to ensure that my video and my actions um, resulted in no consequences or people being fired or people getting in trouble or you know the manager or anything with my Starbucks store and I put up a video, you know, a Starbucks rant, which was stupid and short-sighted, and I realized that it did, um, you know, make me seem like an asshole and entitled and whatever words we would like to use to um, describe me or the situation or my mood in that video. Uh, I mean, I don't really have an excuse for uploading that video. I literally was just coming here on my second channel to vent and complain or whine about something that I completely perceived as a policy change and maybe I can talk about that just a little bit but if I knew then what I know now I would have never made that video. All I can do is say of course I regret posting the video and I apologize for posting the video. I feel like anybody who does like know me who is familiar you know n know me as much as you can know any youtuber but um people who are familiar with me i think you can tell in all earnesty that i would never genuinely knowingly do something harmful to other people that's just literally not the type of individual that i am and it's utterly up to you it's your choice um to believe whatever you want to believe about me but in complete and total honesty it is not my intention to ever do do anything harmful. Most videos here are longer format, um, so a 30 minute long video is not out of the norm on this channel, and most videos on this channel do not hit 100,000 views. And my video, my original rant was up, I don't know if it was like two and a half or three full days, but in that time it performed like a normal Banana Peppers video should. It got around, you know, 70 something thousand views. Um, 6,000 likes and about 600 dislikes, so um, it was really not out of the norm of any other video on this channel. Um, I would like to try and like clarify some things that I said in the video, and anything that I didn't make clear is obviously my fault. I definitely did not um, speak eloquently in that video. Um, I tried to voice that I was very irritated that day, very irate. I tried to recognize I sound bratty, um, that it sounds bitchy. You know, I just, I knew that that wasn't like obviously the greatest, you know, side of myself, but we all do and say things that we regret, that we wish we hadn't done or said, um, you know, that we wish we could take back. I do feel like even though um, you maybe wouldn't do or say exactly what I said or did, uh, you might do something that's roughly the same. Do you know what I'm saying? This is my norm is to just come to YouTube and kind of like, especially on banana peppers, just sort of like plop down and just kind of say whatever I'm thinking, whatever I'm feeling, just sort of like in a stream of consciousness style. I'm not ever really, um, you know, sketching out or thinking what the videos on this channel are going to be. It's just sort of like, oh, something happens and I end up talking about it, you know. Um, this was certainly never a situation that I was trying to garner a lot of support for, that I thought I was in the right or I wanted a bunch of people to rally for me. You know, this is not where my core audience is. This was never a graveyard girl situation. This was just me as a person feeling irritated and feeling ugh, like kind of weird. It's just something that just made me feel bad. And I was just kind of like lashing out and just sort of like regurgitating these things that I was feeling. It doesn't make it right and it doesn't make it acceptable and it doesn't condone the behavior. I'm just describing to you 
sort of what my thought process was and where I was coming from. So I think two of the biggest things um, that people found the, the most angering was that I said, um, I'm looking for new baristas to come in or I'm ready to see fresh faces. And that literally did not mean that I wanted or hoped that a bunch of people would get fired and it would be a whole new crew that would hopefully cater to my every whim. Um, I was, you know, there's certain crews that work at certain times that work on certain days and different crews work on certain days. And I was just having like weird, once again, I can't get into details and specifics, but it's just like if I knew then what I knew now, it's like I would not have taken it that way and I would not have interpreted it that way but I was literally just looking for a new crew of people like I literally know probably nine tenths of the entire group of baristas that work at this location um and so I literally did not mean anything um like that about that statement once again it's my fault completely for not expressing myself in a better way or just not talking about it at all. Um, and then the other thing that I did say in the video was, oh, I was thinking about calling the district manager or I was going to call the district manager. Once again, I totally realized how that comes off without extra context, which is, you know, um, I've had many conversations with the district manager before. Uh, she's a very nice person. And literally I thought, it sort of is, and it sort of isn't. This is a, definitely a very gray area issue. Um, but I literally thought that this was an absolute policy that for whatever reason, this particular store might have ended or changed or whatever. Um, and so I literally was going to call and say, hey, you know, is this going to be something, is this going to be a change that's going to last forever? Is there maybe another store, you know, that's kind of like around driving distance from me that might be following the same policies still? It was not, oh, I want to call the district manager and report this situation or get anyone fired. That's just not how I think about things. I did not put this video up with any ill intent. I just literally wanted to riff and get stuff off my mind. Um, I've come to find out that, once again, this is sort of like a gray area policy. I don't really want to get into the terminology of the policy or what I thought was in place or what I thought was going on. Um, I do know that I absolutely was not receiving special preferential treatment at this store. This is just the way the the store was being operated, that there were many, many, many regular customers that were receiving refills. It was not just me. I don't want to get into specifics of like how many people and who and what um, and why I was absolutely so convinced that this was a policy. I mean, despite the fact that obviously the Starbucks website like states what the policy is, I've even had many conversations with baristas from other stores and whatever. Different policies seem to be enacted differently in different stores that are run by different people that are in different portions of the country that are in Target versus a freestanding store that's maybe like a franchise versus something else. I mean, yes, I do understand that they have an overall policy, but it's just literally like when something is part of your norm and then it just like at the time, it's just like I didn't have all this additional information. Um, from the from the various people that like are directly like in my life and so I thought it was the norm and I thought that overall uh you know for whatever reason the norm was no longer the norm and I was frustrated by it it doesn't mean that I you know ever would want anything to happen to you know this store or any of the baristas that work there etc cetera, etc cetera. um it just means that I was irate about a company changing its policy. I didn't call attention to this situation. It was quite apparently like something that was already like it's something that Starbucks is as a corporation attempting to crack down on. Um, there are quite apparently many people that do do what I was doing, which is, you know, going throughout the day, purchasing various drinks and getting a refill you know, along with making other purchases. And there were quite apparently people that were just getting, you know, tons, just not being honest about it and truly abusing the system, which that does suck that, you know, there are people that do take advantage of things like that. And then that's why 
nobody can get it. But as I thought and as I suspected, this was not some special preferential treatment that I was being given because, you know, I'm graveyard girl. Like, as if that really means anything in the scope of the entire world. It doesn't. I know a lot of people want to know why I privatized the video and, you know, it's just like literally, um, I'm a human being and I said something stupid and I did something stupid and you know I logged back in to upload like the last video on this channel which was like that squishy video whatever um logged it back in it's not like I had forgotten I had done the rant it just wasn't on the forefront of my mind like nobody was really um talking about it it wasn't really a big deal it was just a banana peppers rant video it wasn't it wasn't a great video um and I agree, it was bitchy, and it was crappy, and it was stupid, and it was cringeworthy. Um, but at least now I have the answers, and I know that anything that I said or that I did, um, you know, in, in this little in inconsequential channel that I have, did not harm or hurt or affect anyone, um, which made me feel better because, you know, basically what happened is I just literally thought, oh, this is not, you know, this is not going to be a big deal. It's not buzzworthy. It's just me being an idiot and ranting about something that literally I knew I was being a brat and I really did try to express that it wasn't even really a problem but if you wanted to call it a problem it was definitely a first world problem I was never trying to compare it to any real issues or real problems I was just literally trying to um get you know blow off steam I guess you could say but you know I had logged back in to upload the latest video on this channel and you know I saw that Starbucks rant and I was like oh my god this is just so stupid like it's just kind of like one of those moments where you just like put your foot in your mouth you know so I had already had it in my mind that I wanted to um, privatize the video or delete it whatever language we want to use um, but I decided before I did let's just open it up and see what people are saying right can't hurt clicked on the comments and the very first uh, comment that I just so happened to read. I don't know if it was like the top comment or whatever, but it was like, oh my god, she's gonna get so many people fired. And that comment literally filled me with such complete and total panic over the situation uh, that I absolutely, you know, if I didn't already intend to privatize the video at that point, I definitely would have privatized it. And, you know, then that sort of started the thing of like, well, I want to go talk to people. I want to make sure that I haven't done any harm, that I couldn't possibly get anybody in trouble. Um, and I just basically wanted to talk to the people that I talk to every day. I still talk to them every single day and just, you know, say, hey, this is what I said. I was mad. Um, I acted like an asshole. I said things that I wouldn't say again. I said things that I regret. Um, and, you know, literally only one person there like knew that I had made the video and I mean who knows like people might be saying they didn't see it maybe they did I'm just saying I explained myself I apologized nobody is treating me any differently nobody is you know making a big deal out of it I've talked to you know uh, some higher up people and you know it it's just not on the radar you know what I mean I haven't really been addressing it or talking about it or wanting a lot of people to like tag Starbucks or anything else until I got all the answers um you know that it was embarrassing on my part um but not harmful the only thing that I do find upsetting is that this has sort of like m morphed into some narrative that I am rude to baristas or I'm rude to um, you know, people at work anywhere. And once again, I can't convince you of that. I do say that I make an, honors, uh, an honest effort like every human being I think should um, to say please and thank you. Can I have this? Could I get that? Um, am I willing to commit and say that every experience with me is a bag of rainbows? Definitely not. I feel like I'm a person just like anybody else. I've got good days. I've got bad days. Um, I'm sure sometimes I'm pleasant to be around and I'm pleasant to deal with and I'm sure some days I'm unpleasant uh, to be around and unpleasant to deal with and I do attempt to be kind and courteous to everyone. Do I always remember to say please and thank you etc etc every single time? 
No, I don't. Um, I feel like anything that I was doing and anything that I still do is strictly out of familiarity with people, normalcy of the situation. It's not because I feel like I'm special or entitled. Uh, I still just roll up to this day and say, hey, it's Bunny, can I get my blank? A lot of times they will greet me before and they'll just say, hey, what do you want? What are you here for? I mean, once again, like, I don't, I don't think that that's rude when people don't greet me with the official, like, hi, it's, a, it's welcome to Starbucks or whatever they say. I have no idea. I haven't heard that greeting in forever. Like, because no, we just, like, I just don't have that conversation with people. Um, there are certain baristas that I do prefer over others. Once again, just out of like familiarity or they make the drinks a little bit different. And I feel like any barista I've ever known, like some people will say, hey, I'm really good at making frappuccinos over this. Um, so, you know, once again, was I driving through and requesting certain people sometimes to make my drinks? Sure. Um, did I think that that was bad or rude or an inconvenience? No. It's just out of familiarity with a group of people and you know, just the MO of how things have always been. I've got lots of baristas, um, you know, that are extremely kind to me and they still ask me this. Like they know like, oh, sometimes the coffee gets brewed a little strong or the tea gets brewed a little strong. So they'll ask, hey, uh, would you like a little extra milk? Or could you take, actually, usually they're like, oh, would you take a sip of that before you leave and just, you know, tell us what you think. Do you need a little extra classic? Do you need a little extra milk? Whatever. Sometimes they'd pass me through, you know, a little like um, a travel cup with sweetener and I would just dump it in and stir it up, shake it up myself, whatever. Sometimes they would just say, hey, it's easier if we just remake it and, and give you a whole new one. I mean, that was just something that was offered to me and sometimes I um, took them up on that offer and sometimes I didn't. All the things that I was trying to say in the video, I didn't get out right, obviously. Um, you know, my big thing was is I perceived it as a policy change. It is somewhat of a policy change. Um, but my thing was, I was trying to compare it to like a Sephora VIB Rouge situation where Starbucks is obviously not like shopping in a grocery store or getting gas. It's a luxury. It's something, you know, it's like a treat. Um, and so is shopping for makeup at Sephora. It's a luxury. It's a treat. It's not a necessity. And, you know, people have been saying for years, myself included, that the VIB Rouge program or VIB um, kind of sucks. They don't really seem to give you many rewards for being such a loyal customer. And so that's sort of what I was trying to equate it to. I think in the original video I said coupons or something stupid like that. Literally what I was thinking in my mind is, you know, I feel like, um, and, and maybe I'm ignorant in this. Um, you might agree with me. You might not agree with me. Ultimately, I don't believe this view is harmful in any way, but I don't see a problem with, um, you know, these larger corporations giving more perks to their most loyal customers, which yes, I have a gold card. You do rack up stars or whatever like that with purchases. And I think it's like every 125 stars or something gives you a free item of your choice. Um, you know, it can be like food or drink or whatever. So yes, they do have some things like that. Um, but I overall do wish that they would give more jurisdiction to individual stores and, you know, relying on the intelligence of the baristas. They know, you know, which customers have been in, which customers frequent, which customers are regulars, which customers aren't. But I also do see the fallacy of that logic that obviously, you know, if you, if you have things in place for regulars, you know, I, I, I do understand the fallacy of that logic. I'm just saying it would be nice if Starbucks, you know, maybe did have some sort of like regulars program or something like that. I mean, it, it, it might not be realistic, but a girl can dream, right? That was sort of like the meatiness of the argument. I did say that, oh, you know, I feel like maybe not getting the refills would promulgate me to go less, but I feel like I've sort of been explaining in snippets that I'm trying to make healthier choices. One being, I think that I should frequent Starbucks less. I think I should consume less caffeine, less sugar, etc., etc. And so I was just thinking, you know, maybe if I wasn't going in to potentially get refills, you know, along with some other drinks. And sometimes I ju did just pull through and get a refill. And so I feel like, you know, maybe without that additional perk, I would be inclined to visit less, which is what sort of like made me feel bummed out or like icky about the possibility of, um, you know, my normal routine and my normal day 
changing. And so it was just sort of like all of that were the, those were the things that I was like trying to say. Once again, it's completely my fault that the information got um, misconstrued and, you know, sort of thought of in another way because, you know, anytime there's something like this that happens, I feel like obviously it's my fault because I'm not expressing and conveying my thoughts and ideas in an articulate um, manner. And so I'm just firing off in anger and saying things that sound like, I'm going to call the manager, which is douchey as hell. Um, I'll be the first person to admit that. Um, I feel like there's just been a lot of like, oh, you know, she was getting this, she was ordering this, whatever. So here is my standard um, Starbucks consumption throughout the day, with the exception of, you know, like unicorn frappuccinos, zombie frappuccinos, like specialty drinks, which I would get made just the way that they make them. Pumpkin spice, drinks like that, I pretty much get them just the way that they make them, with the exception of I have to have skim milk because I'm kind of lactose intolerant. Other than that, my day in, day out, tried and true is the regular, like, pitcher brewed black tea. Like they make a giant pitcher of tea. What I actually get is a grande black tea, but I love tons of extra ice and I also like to make it a bit weaker. So I add a lot of water and I put five pumps classic and then my coffee is pretty much the same way. It's actually a grande in a Trenta cup with a lot of extra ice, skim milk and five pumps classic. Oh, and a pink drink, but I get it made just the way that they make it. Um, once again, a Trenta with extra ice. The only things I was ever getting refills of was the um, plain black tea and the plain coffee. No specialty drinks, no frappuccinos, nothing like that. Maybe this isn't like the way that all stores do it. Um, maybe it's just the way that stores in my area seem to do it. Um, but whether you are getting refills inside the store, like you're staying in store all day, or you were getting refills through the drive through uh, they were always giving a clean cup, which always made sense to me and I feel like that's where I saw a little bit more fallacy in this policy was you know I didn't really ever understand how it would be clean which once again I'm totally willing to admit that I'm ignorant but even if you're sitting in store and you're drinking out of a cup like you might be you might have the flu you know you might be going to the bathroom and not washing your hands and like drinking out of your cup and then like passing it back to the barista even in store to make a refill so um i always assumed and it has been confirmed that whether you were coming through the drive through or staying in store they were giving a new cup each time once again that might just be things that happen around this area um and not like their official policy their global policy whatever i'm not well versed on that stuff um and i i literally just don't go on the official starbucks website I just don't. I don't know what I can say about that. That's why it was like sort of silly in my mind that obviously, you know, and I think maybe they can even like look it up or see when they scan the card that like, oh, you were here an hour ago or two hours ago or whatever. Um, and so that was sort of like the fallacy in my mind that this policy would be changed if they are going to give you a fresh drink and a fresh cup each time, whether you come through the drive through or stay in store. Um, because it does sound like there's a lot of people who stay in store a lot and literally just drink like 12 drinks a day. I I understand rules are rules, um, but I was literally just arguing from a policy standpoint that seemed a little silly to me. Once again, I might be totally wrong, I might be an asshole for thinking that, but that's literally just um, what I'm thinking about, or, or that's how I see it, and uh, you know, I'm not up in arms about it. Like I never really wanted to draw attention to it. I mean, I feel like if I was that up in arms about it or I was that concerned about it, like Starbucks follows me on Instagram and you know, why wouldn't I send them a DM? I think they follow me on Twitter. Like why wouldn't I send them a DM and say, hey, I feel so wronged by this whole process, blah, blah, blah. Like I was literally just coming to vent about Starbucks frustrations, things that were irritating me. It was never meant to confront anyone or get anyone in trouble or anything like that. I was just literally coming to vent to you guys. Really don't feel like I have too much else to say about this subject. I mean, obviously I was in the wrong and I shouldn't have done what I did and it's never my intention to harm anyone but also make you guys feel, you know, uncomfortable, upset, or angry as a viewer. That's never my goal. I love to come here and just hang out and talk about whatever, um, you know, which is sometimes just venting and getting things off my chest. Um, 
and it was just the wrong day to record it. I feel like this situation was sort of like a perfect storm where, you know, I was just very irate that day, like not only because of the Starbucks situation that was going on, but just also because of other things. Um, and I feel like the person who communicated this to me, like, didn't really get into any details. And so I just was like, so, and honestly, they don't have to tell me any details, but obviously, you know, I just feel like context helps. And once again, if I would have known then what I know now and the reasons for this and that and the other, um, then I obviously would never have felt that way to begin with, you know? I understand everybody didn't want to watch the whole video. I feel like it was towards the, con you know, the end of the video that I said, you guys know I'm gonna be back at Starbucks tomorrow. Like, literally, I feel like Starbucks is like, uh, you know, it's a big part of my life and you guys may make fun of me for that or think it's stupid or whatever, but it's something that I enjoy. It's just a simple pleasure. Honestly, really, I wish I could reach out to corporate um, and, and honestly tell them like, what a good store this is and like I said I feel like I was irate and there was some miscommunication that day um but overall and I and I know people laugh at me and make fun of me and tease me for saying oh you know baristas as friends the positive things that I probably said in a negative way in the rant video about how you know I really do feel um like they go above and beyond to create a welcoming atmosphere. I know that there's so many regular customers to this store. There has to be a reason that m not just me, but many other people are coming in day in, day out, over and over and over and over again um, for that experience or for that enjoyment. Like I said, I'm really not going to um, dig any deeper and say, you know, all the things that I've been told over the years of why I thought that this was normal and why I thought it was policy. I, I certainly did not think it was just for me and it was not. I, I feel like a lot of people are upset that I was talking about anxiety or depression and by no means was I using it as an excuse for the way I was acting or as an excuse for bad behavior or as an excuse to be, you know, just gross and irritated. I mean, it's certainly not an excuse. I was just sort of trying to express at that moment, at that capsule of time, why certain things maybe were you know, just, I feel like sometimes I just don't process things very well. Um, and I am, you know, taking steps to better myself. I'm just saying things don't affect everyone um, the same way. You know, the way that anxiety happens for you may not be the same way that it happens for me. I by no means was using it as an excuse for bad behavior. I was just trying to tell you guys at that point in time like where my mental space was um, and sort of maybe some of the reasons that I was processing things the way that I was. Um, I, I wasn't trying to say that you know I thought about I wanted to get refills because I had anxiety. Like that wasn't what I was trying to say. I can understand how it would be misconstrued that way, but that was not what I was trying to say. I don't have social anxiety. I have um, anxiety that's triggered by medical things. Sometimes those are things that I think or I feel myself um, that certainly are not visible to anyone. The road to bettering oneself it has bumps in the road and um, you have to learn things. You've got to learn different coping mechanisms, better coping mechanisms, and I'm learning, but I'm not there yet. But I definitely definitely did not mean to insult anyone or upset anyone by, um, you know, talking about anxiety or depression in that video. I was just kind of just ranting about all sorts of things and it just, I mean, you know, anybody who's he who's here for any amount of time knows that I just sort of like stream of consciousness it on this channel. To anybody that I upset or anybody who feels like, you know, these are my true colors and I'm actually just a terrible, rude, entitled person, I can't change your mind. I can't make you like me. I can't make you subscribe. I can't make you, you know, it's, it's up to you. It's totally your choice. Um, I've had similar feelings about, you know, YouTubers or other artists or whatever um, that I love to watch. I have kind of a crappy saying, which is like, you know, stick around long enough. Like somebody's gonna do something that disappoints you or upsets you. Like that's just how, like we just don't agree on everything as human beings. Watch somebody or whatever. Um, there's still gonna be certain things that 
turn you off or just make you feel weird or creepy or that you don't like or you don't agree with. I think a great example for myself would be, you know, H3H3. H3. I'm a, I am an enormous H3H3 H3 fan. Um, but you know, sometimes he has said things that I don't like, that puts me off, that I don't agree with. But, you know, I stick around and, um, you know, he always says other things or makes other jokes or whatever. I still enjoy the content. Um, and that's just kind of the way that it is. I certainly did not mean or do any harm by it. I was literally just trying to get frustrations, something that had irritated me off my chest. Um, and I decided to bring it to YouTube because that's what's normal for me is sitting down and making YouTube videos. Um, you definitely won't ever see another rant out of me. I feel like I just never expressed them very well and I just probably should not be doing them. Um, hindsight is 2020. Um, and all I can do is try harder and be better and, you know, work harder on myself. Uh, I feel like that's all you can ask for anyone because at the end of the day, none of us are perfect people. Um, I make mistakes and I'm sure you make mistakes too. The only thing that we can do is apologize to, you know, anybody who's involved um, and, you know, try and make amends and try and move on and do better. So uh, thank you guys for listening to me. I feel like I pretty much covered every topic that, you know, I could cover reasonably. I love you guys and I will talk to you later. Bye.